Good morning, happy Memorial Day, and welcome to our Sunday morning virtual service. My name is Reverend James Parker. It's just such a pleasure to be here with you today and a great opportunity for us to come into a moment of oneness. Well, let's get started with our daily word. And our daily word today is inner peace. And it says, peace grows within me as I remain centered in God. Inner peace, the peace of God that my words can only begin to describe, does not depend on outer circumstances. Peace does not come from any external source. It arises from within me, at a place in consciousness, sometimes called the center of my being. Peace, like all the qualities of God, waits for me to recognize and claim it. I claim inner peace when I, when I remember the truth that God's presence is always with me and within me. As I center my awareness in the divine presence within, peace soothes my feelings and restores order to my thoughts. I move through all circumstances with calm assurance. Peace grows within me as I remain centered in God. Every event in my day contributes to the calm peace of my soul. And the scripture comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 26, verse 3. Those of steadfast mind, you keep in peace, in peace because they trust in you. Let's take a moment and go into the silence and come into a moment of oneness and peace with spirit. And so it is. Good morning. Welcome to our virtual service. My name is Reverend James Parker. It's such a pleasure to be here with you today. And this is a fine day for us to get into this lesson. My lesson today is discovering heaven on earth. Friends, heaven on earth is a real possibility. And since it is possible to experience heaven on earth, wouldn't it be a good idea to make it both your goal and your expectation every day? The truth is, you can create heaven on earth or hell on earth simply by what you choose to focus on. I mean, when you see a rose bush, do you focus on the flowers or the thorns? Now, there are three common obstacles to discovering heaven on earth. Disbelief, fear and worry, and compulsivity. Disbelief prevents us from even considering the possibility of stepping into that heaven that is already here. Fear and worry is when you worry and fret about problems. These negative feelings block you from reaching your highest potential. And lastly, compulsivity is where instead of stopping to see where you really are, you rush on to the next problem, worry or self-improvement project, 
you rarely stop to smell the roses, which is where the doorway to heaven lies. Tell me, what are you currently focusing your attention on? What are you allowing into your consciousness? Because simply put, experiencing heaven on earth is your willingness to choose it and focus it into being. Wayne Dyer once said, heaven on earth is not a place you must find. It's a choice you must make. In fact, mystics from every tradition have been trying to teach us for centuries that heaven on earth is already here when we're awake enough to see it. And yes, I get it. Heaven is hard to see when the kids are driving you crazy or the commute through traffic hits you or stress at work is killing you or household bills are piling up. But I challenge you to take a different approach to discovering heaven on earth. For starters, admit that you've actually been there before, many times, but forgot. Consider this. Think of the happiest time in your life. A first love, the excitement of pregnancy, seeing the smile of a baby, finding a new career, or making a huge success. Honestly, have you ever been astonished by the beauty of nature, an incredible sunset, magnificent landscape, or maybe a timeless moment of singing birds, water rolling downstream, waves crashing into the shore, or the feeling of a cool breeze on your face. How did you feel? How did the world seem in that moment? Were you focused on the good? Hmm. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson went on a camping trip one day. As they were setting up the tent and settling in for the night, Holmes looked up into the sky and said, Watson, look up into the sky and tell me what you see. Watson looked up and said, I see the heavens, of course. Still staring up, Holmes asked, and what does that tell you? Wanting to impress him, Watson replied, astronomically, it tells me that there are millions of galaxies and potentially billions of planets. Meteorologically, it tells me that we will have a beautiful day tomorrow. Theologically, it tells me that God and the universe are infinite. After a brief pause, Watson said to Holmes, and what does it look like to you? Looking around now, Holmes replies, well, it tells me somebody stole our tent. <laughs> In the book of Luke chapter 17, verse 20, it says, once having been asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, The kingdom of God does not come by observation. Neither will they say, Behold, it is here, or behold, there it is. For behold, the kingdom of heaven is within you. In unity, we think of heaven not as a place, but as a state of consciousness. And not just any state of consciousness, but a specific state of consciousness, particularly Heaven is defined in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary as a state of consciousness in which the soul and body are in harmony with divine mind. Heaven is not a place, a locality, with streets of gold and gates of pearl. It is not a place in the sky where we go when we die. It is a state of mind, a higher level of consciousness. Friends, to discover heaven on earth involves a shift in consciousness that changes how you experience the world. The shift has the following characteristics. The mind becomes quiet. The inner world of racing thoughts, inner chatter, chatter a wishful fantasy or endless to-do list grow silent. And you notice a wonderful stillness inside and out. Attention moves to the immediate present. You are no longer focusing on past or future events. Shifting from conception to perception then has the interesting effect of waking you up further. As you are stimulated toward the here and now, you start to see what's around you and discover the world's captivating beauty and perfection just as it is. In this consciousness, a, qual a quality of sacredness and holiness increasingly emerges. The world seems filled with a presence that is awake, aware, patient, and loving. Let me give you an example. An example of a woman who created her own heaven on earth, oblivious to anything other than her bliss, her joy, 
her state of happiness. She says, the other day, I had just come from a particularly exhilarating choir practice and I was feeling heavenly. I drove by a religious bookstore and thought I would stop in and browse. At the counter, they had a hunk if you love Jesus bumper sticker. I bought it and put it on the back of my car and I'm really glad I did. What an uplifting experience. I was stopped at the light of a busy intersection, just lost in my heavenly thoughts and feelings, and I didn't notice that the light had turned green. Suddenly, I found lots of people who loved Jesus too. Surprisingly, the boy behind me started to honk like crazy. He must really love Jesus because pretty soon, he leaned out his window and yelled, Go, Jesus, go! Everyone else started honking too, so I, I leaned out of my window and waved and smiled to all those loving people. There must have been a guy from Florida back there because I could hear him yelling something about a sunny beach. And I saw him waving in a funny way with only one finger. My teenage son was in the back seat and so I asked him what that meant. He was so caught in the joy of the moment that he could hardly catch his breath from laughing but finally told me that it was the Hawaiian good luck sign. So I leaned out the window and gave him the good luck sign right back. A couple of people were so caught up in the joy of this heavenly moment that they got out of their cars and were walking toward me. I just knew they wanted to pray with me, but then I noticed the light had changed to yellow. So I stepped on the gas. It's a good thing I did because I was the only car to get across the intersection. I looked back at all my new friends standing there and leaned out of the window, gave them a big smile, and I held up the Hawaiian good luck sign as I drove away. <laughs> Clearly, she had a heavenly focus. Yes, my friends, it is possible to create heaven on earth. It just takes knowing where it is inside and choosing to say, I have suffered enough. I'm going to begin dwelling there. This is the secret to creating heaven on earth. Shift your focus from what you don't have that you think you should have and refocus on the amazing life you do have. Then everything changes and you get a magical bonus. Simply by shifting your focus to, to what you do enjoy and appreciate about your life, you open the way for more abundance of all good things to flow to you. Dan Fogelberg said, there's a heaven on earth that so few ever find, though the maps in your soul and the roads in your mind point to it. Friends, you are a walking, talking, living, breathing manifestation of God, powerful beyond your wildest imagination, whole, perfect, and complete in every way. Can you admit that you have suffered enough from the pangs of self-doubt and self-criticism? Can you acknowledge that you have suffered enough from the possible abandonment or abuse you may have experienced as a kid? Can you admit that you have suffered the immobilization of fear enough? Can you say that's enough? This is not who I am. This is when I begin to dwell in heaven. Sure, we may not stay there permanently, but we can get a glimpse of it. We can see it, we can taste it, we can know it's possible. And the more we get a glimpse of it, the more we experience it, and the more we experience it, the even greater our experience of it will be. Remind yourself of the words of Jesus. Heaven is not over here or over there. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Friends, you don't have to search outside yourself or up in the skies for what is already within you. You just need to concentrate and focus your, your inner light and allow yourself to be divinely guided to the heavenly dreams, desires, answers, and freedoms you seek. So if you want to start seeing heaven on earth in your life every day, here's one way to start. Number one, find a peaceful and pleasant place to stop everything. Disconnect from people, phones, and tasks, and be quiet for a few minutes. Breathe deeply. Quiet your mind and downshift from the world's hectic pace. Number two, 
Make a conscious effort to create a sacred space. Meditate, pray, or read something that touches you spiritually. Experience the divine in whatever way feels most natural to you. Number three, stop intellectualizing everything. Instead, heighten awareness and begin examining the world just as it is, without names, ideas, judgments, or beliefs. Look at whatever is around you and see it as if for the very first time. Notice the colors, patterns, textures, arrangements of things, and how they subtly change in the light, and how that affects their appearance. Open your senses, be utterly fascinated, and you will soon discover that the world is not what you think. Number four, bring love and joy to whatever you experience. You already know how to love, so love everything unconditionally in this moment and see how the world changes before your eyes. Finally, number five, silently affirm, this is heaven on earth. As you do this, your perception and feelings change. Everything becomes a clear vision of beauty and blessings. There's an old saying, hell cools off when we think of heaven. Friends, heaven is within you and it will come forth when you know who you are and proclaim to yourself and to the world that you are one with God, whole, perfect, and complete. When you are willing to claim your greatness, your heaven on earth, it will become contagious and attract others to do the same. So let me recap. You are a walking, talking, living, breathing manifestation of God, powerful beyond your wildest dreams. Heaven will come forth when you know who you are and can proclaim that you are one with God, whole, perfect, and complete. Heaven will arrive when you know that because you are one with God, you are one with everyone. Heaven will arrive when you allow your inner wisdom, love, abundance, joy, and peace to be expressed outwardly. Remind yourself that you've been there before. That's when heaven will arrive and you will have discovered the profound secret to your happiness, prosperity, and freedom. Friends, are you willing to do this with me today? Well, thank you all, and God bless you. We come to that time of our service where we open our hearts to give. And this is a time for you to come forth in your blessings so that you may be blessed. Now, there are three ways that you can give. You can go to our website at unitychicago.org and hit the Contribute button. Or you can text us at 773-492-8772. And always send us a check to 2650 West Montrose, Suite 110, Chicago, Illinois, 60618. Now take that gift, take that offering, and send love from your heart into that gift. And let us say our offertory blessing together. Divine love, richly flowing through me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am grateful for the blessings of this day, I am grateful for the blessings on the way. And so it is. Friends, if you prayed this prayer with us, you are moving energy. You are moving substance. Now your task is to open the way to claim your gift. Now let's pray it into existence. Heavenly Mother, Father, everything God, thank you for these gifts we received today. We know they come from those who love you and who are open and receptive to doing your will and following your ways. Thank you, God, that you are always working in our lives. Thank you for the love and the truth and the understanding. Now take these gifts, God, and use them to make our world a better place and then return them to the giver, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Fill their bank accounts, fill their wallets, allow them to come forth in their perfect way and, and experience love and perfect health. Now, God, I give thanks. I give thanks for your truth, for your love, for your peace and we know it in the name and nature of Jesus the Christ. And so it is, amen. Well, friends, thank you for being here with us today. If you're visiting us for the first time, welcome to our home, welcome to our community. We love you, we bless you, we appreciate you. Please come back. And if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell, like us. We wanna get our message out there so that we may bless others. 
And if you're going through something, if you're dealing with any kind of struggle, go to our website, find something there that inspires you. Now stick around to the end of our service. Check out our announcements. I'm sure you'll find something there uh, that opens the way for new possibilities and opportunities. And now I ask that you become still and let us say our prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Well, friends, thank you for being with us here today. Happy Memorial Day. We'll see you next week. God bless you.